Here you see the main window of the Enosyconia Inspector. On the left you find the Patient Database. You can simply add a patient by clicking on the Add New Patient button. With each patient, a series of previous Enosyconia examinations is associated as well as possible new Enosyconia correcting prescriptions. After an examination has been selected, it can be opened to view or edit the test results. The same holds for a new prescription. To test the patient for anosyconia, you first need to select the patient in the database. Next, you select the type of prescription the patient will be wearing during the test. And you will select which color of the red-green glasses will be in front of the right eye. There are different test programs, and you will get additional information about these programs when you move the mouse on top of the different buttons. The test setup is as follows. The patient sits centered in front of the screen. He or she should be looking through red-green filters, and the ambient lighting should preferably be dimmed. Let's start a screening test. The startup screen gives directions on how to perform the test, and the actual test is started by pressing any key. As you can see, there are two rectangles, each visible to only one eye due to the red-green glasses. The patient's task is to compare the two rectangles and identify the one that he or she perceives to be the largest. If the left rectangle is perceived larger, the left arrow key needs to be pressed. If the right rectangle is perceived as larger, then the right arrow key needs to be pressed. If the patient really cannot make a choice, the E key, or both arrow keys, can be pressed at the same time to denote that the patient saw the rectangles as equal in size. If a fixation disparity causes the two rectangles to be misaligned, you can use the Shift plus arrow keys to align them. A whole series of these forced choice direct comparison tests will determine the amount of anisoconia as well as the measurement consistency. Let's skip the rest of this test and look at a previous result. On the right side, you can see the result summary. The anisoconia has been tested in different directions and for different field angles. Different field angles means that the rectangles were on average of different size and so different parts of the retina were tested. Especially with retinally induced anisoconia, such as with an epiretinal membrane or retinal detachment, the anisoconia may change as a function of field angle. The anisoconia in this case was approximately 4 to 5 percent. The numbers in between brackets are the inconsistencies made in the measurements. Let's look at some of the raw data from this examination. Here you see a completely consistent measurement. For these image size differences, the left eye perceived the larger image. Then there is a sharp transition, giving the amount of anisoconia, and then the right eye perceived the larger image. If we look at the horizontal direction, at 4 degrees field angle, then we see two inconsistencies. This means that around the calculated amount of anisoconia, there were two measurement points that were inconsistent with the rest of the data. A few inconsistencies does not necessarily mean there is a clinically significant measurement error, but with three or more inconsistencies, you are advised to look at the raw data to see what happened. Let's now see how we can solve the patient's anisoconia problems. Before designing a new prescription to reduce the anisoconia, it may be useful to first verify with so-called size lenses 
if the patient is indeed helped by modifying his or her prescription. Size lenses are lenses without any refractive power, but with a magnification. Such a lens can simply be held in front of the patient's habitual prescription to simulate adding an anisoconia correction. Say the outcome is that the patient in our example is already helped with a 3% anisoconia correction. This is less than the measured 4 to 5%. This means that the remaining 1 to 2% is no problem for the patient. As we will see next, correcting only 3% instead of the full 4 to 5 helps to obtain a cosmetically better pair of glasses. To design a new prescription, you click on the New button. This brings us to the design window of the new prescription. On the right side, you find the results. For example, for the prescription that was used during the testing, here called the old prescription, we found anisoconia values of 5.5 and 4% for the vertical and horizontal directions. When starting a new design, there is an empty new prescription giving in this case close to zero anisoconia values. Of course, an empty prescription is no option, because now the patient is not corrected for refractive errors either. Therefore, we click on Edit, Insert Glasses, or in short, this small button with a G on it. Now, the same prescriptions as was used during the testing is filled in for the new prescription. The calculated anisoconia for the new prescription is now of course the same as the measured anisoconia of the old prescription. The aim now is to change the new prescription to reduce the anisoconia by 3%. The different parameters of the new prescription can be changed by simply clicking on these parameters or their values. For example, let's change the thickness of the lenses. By moving the slider bar of the right eye lens, it shows that increasing the thickness results in less anisoconia. Let's make the right eye lens 7 mm thick. Decreasing the thickness of the right eye lens helps reduce the anisoconia. However, as the edge thickness graph shows, the thickness cannot be made much smaller so we keep the thickness of the left eye lens at 5 mm. It could help to reduce the frame size. But that will not be necessary in this case. By just changing the thickness of the right eye lens, we already have a correction of 1.5%. By also changing the base curve of the right eye lens to 10 diopters, you can see that the required 3% correction is obtained. For anisometropic patients, like in this case, it is also good to check the possibilities of using one or two contact lenses. Not only can this lead to cosmetically more attractive solutions, but also the amount of optically induced anisophoria may reduce more. The amount of anisophoria is shown here. Let's go back and design a new prescription based on one contact lens. We will start again with the same glasses as used during the testing. Now we add a contact lens to the right eye. A very useful option is to keep the total refractive power constant. If now the power of the spectacle lens is changed, you can see that automatically the power of the contact lens is updated to keep the total refractive power constant. The anisoconia has now been reduced to near zero, but as you can see in the image, the edge thickness has become too small. Let's make that a little larger. The anisoconia is now fully corrected, with hardly any anisophoria left. In addition, there are only minor cosmetic implications. This one contact lens design was more for demonstration purposes. In general, one would first see if correcting with two contact lenses would work.
This is easily done by clicking on the button C. Now the prescription used during the testing has been converted into contact lenses. In this specific example, the anisoconia seems to be reduced to acceptable levels. An advantage of having only contact lenses is also that there is never any optically induced anisophoria. Even though this demonstration showed you that anisoconia management can be easy, it might be good to know that the software includes the possibility to consult with Dr. DeVitt from Optical Diagnostics about your case. This might come in handy if you have a difficult case or if you only rarely deal with an anisoconia patient and would like to outsource the design of new prescriptions. New prescriptions designed by Dr. DeVitt can easily be downloaded into the software with the button Download. You viewed a brief demonstration of the Anisoconia Inspector software. Thank you for your attention.